Welcome back to Curing Your Bipolar Disorder. So, you're a former bipolar sufferer. <clears throat> You've been smiling for five minutes as soon as you wake up in the morning. You've learned some incantations, some strategies for sleeping, a little bit about the importance of exercise and some other things. What else can we do to improve our lives, improve our mind, body and soul? Something else that's really, really important is making sure that the people in your life are a positive influence. What do I mean by that? Well, for me, when I was in a position when the moment I took responsibility for my life, I started to change some of the people that I interacted with and I got rid of some very negative influences in my life and found myself a higher peer group. Now, some of the people that I spent my time with were people that I'd never actually met. So these are people that were mentoring me through books, through videos, and through multimedia material. So if you're socially isolated and you know, you're on your own, you don't see many people, then you can use these, these amazing mentors. You can go on YouTube and find the most amazing people in the world and get inspiration from them and find people there who can really empower you and, and can help you. Um, you know, there's so, so many people there that can help you. And also, look at the reality of your life. Is there a family member who is a really negative influence? If there is, be completely honest about yourself and say, look, I need to spend less time with this person. And then I need to reevaluate reevaluate my relationship with that person and make sure that that person understands that we can't communicate in the same way that we have been up until now otherwise say goodbye and it can be very very tough it could be someone that we deeply deeply love but you can't let other people stop you being the person that you want to be you can't let other people stop you from curing your bipolar disorder as well as crazy as it sounds okay what else is there? Well, there might be a psychiatrist that you can't stand, okay, who doesn't treat you as a human being, who treats you, just says, oh, it's just more medication and is life worth living and all this thing, have no human emotion whatsoever. Change your psychiatrist. You're entitled to do that. You're allowed to do that. You can find yourself an advocate within the mental health system. You can, you know, you might want to find something else where... You can get helped by a psychologist or CBT. You might want to get into NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, to, you know, for a positive mindset. You might really want to get into personal development. Um, you know, some, some people that have really helped me, Jim Rohn, Brian Tracy, Anthony Robbins, Eckhart Tolle. There's so many people. Stephen Covey. You know, there's so many positive role models. It's unbelievable. Wayne Dyer. What you need to do is to imagine that, let's say, write down, okay, the 10 people that you spend the most time with. Okay, just stop me now and write down the 10 people that you spend the most time with. Now you've written those 10 people, write down whether they have a positive or negative. So just put a cross or a tick by them where they have a positive or negative influence on you. Stop me now. Okay, so I don't know how many ticks you have. Um, if you've got 10 ticks and you're really suffering right now, then there's something wrong with you. You're not being honest, okay? So if you've got quite a few crosses in there, you have to eliminate them. So we, what we want is more, we want more ticks and crosses, and preferably we want 
nine ticks and one cross. That's the stage where we want to get to. It might be really difficult to do that now. You can't say, well, I can't stop with these three or four people. Well, the answer is you can. Okay, you've got to find yourself. Now, each person that you get rid of, you've got to replace them with someone positive. So try and find someone that you know that you think will be positive. Maybe, you know, one person face to face. Uh, and then other people that they may be mentors that you don't actually know. But you think, well, actually, it would, instead of listening to such and such moan and put me down all the time, wouldn't it be better to, you know, get really educated about uh, changing my belief systems and it, it, it reaching my destiny? Of course it is. Of course it is. So it's really, really, you know, my heart is pumping through here. I really, really want you to, to take this initi initiative and make this huge step. You see, where we focus on is where we end up in life. And if you can change the people that you hang around with so that they push you and reach you to a higher place, and they make you believe more in yourself, then that's a great thing. So let's imagine something for a moment, okay? Let's imagine that we're in a place where let's say it's the end of your life okay and you you're in heaven or whatever it is and let's say we're in heaven okay it's the nicest thing there isn't it and we look in front of a mirror okay i want you to see the person that you are not the person that you could have been this is really really important let me describe this another in another way to you okay um imagine we're in heaven and we're having a fun with the angels and we've been there for a month or so and it's great you know we're just having a great time it's the best ever um it's like we've cured our bipolar disorder and we cured the whole of bipolar disorder on earth and no one's been mentally ill and it's world peace and everyone's happy everyone's got enough to share and all this kind of things but we're all interesting as well and we're having fun in heaven uh, and but there's this one room that you keep seeing and you no one ever mentions it and you say to the angels look can i have a look at this room please and say no we don't really want you to see that room but you can if you like and you think well temptation let me try so you're tempted to go in that room so you open the room and you see this amazing thing it's everything you ever dreamed of is in that room you just think wow what this is amazing and you say what is, what is this and the angel says to you, this is what you could have been on earth if you would have believed in yourself. Whoa, that should be like a eureka moment, okay? So what we want to work on is ways that we can believe, our, believe in ourselves. Now, you can imagine, you change your peer group from today, okay? You find people who are going to push you to a higher place, you make you believe in yourself more, who are going to give you strategies to get to where you want to get to. So you've got to find people that you, that you hang around with mentally who are going to get you to a, to a higher calling. So people who've already achieved what you want to have achieved. This is really, really important, okay? So I could be your bipolar person, bipolar recovery person, then you might think, well, I want someone to help me with my finances. Who should I model? Well, if you read the autobiography of Bill Gates or Steve Jobs, I think that would be a pretty good start. I'm not, I think, you know, these things can kind of help. If Let's say you want to be super fit. Why don't you let, find just someone who's super fit, who's written an autobiography or, or something like this? So what I'm saying is surround yourself by everything that you want to do in life, you know, all the different aspects. So your your mental health your spirituality your career your family all these different aspects look at them and 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 then break them down so we started off with our friends here didn't we so we we what we've done is we've maybe got rid of one or two people in in our lives who've been a bit negative and we've replaced them with some more positive people um the reason i said add a mentor in is because i was just worried that if someone's really isolated and they're really suffering right now, then that is the best way out of it. Because And that's what got me out of it, big time, okay? 
So let's do another program now, okay? So why don't we look at key areas? Okay, so let's pick five areas in our lives that we want to improve, okay? So fitness. Okay, so come up with one mentor for each. So first we'll start with fitness, okay? Come up with one mentor for that. Okay, stop me now. So a great example for fitness, if you want to be really muscular, what you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger might be a good place to start. Or if you want to be really fast, then Usain Bolt would be, you know, a good, a good way to start. Then wealth. Stop me there. Come on up with someone for wealth. You really have to follow their strategies. So read an autobiography, watch YouTube videos of them speaking. Um, is is a really good you know good way of doing things like this, and or listen to them on the iPod like free downloads or something or, or get a book on from Amazon. So what do we have? We have fitness, wealth, spirituality. Think of spirituality. Is it somebody like Wayne Dyer or Deepak Chopra or something, or something in your religion even? Stop me now, come up with another one, that, that's religion. So we have fitness, wealth, religion. Now come up with family. So what I mean by family is it, it means like someone who's really good at relationships, who's talking about relationships or even specifically it could be parenting or let me give you some examples. So. Stephen Covey have the seven habits of highly effective marriage. Zig Ziglar has um, raising positive kids in a negative world. You know, these are some great examples if you can't think of some, but this is quite important, relationships. Okay, and let's come up with your fifth category. So that's your, your mental health, okay? That can be that can be that could be me, the bipolar disorder, that's great. If that's if that is fine. If it's something else, if you're looking for something else on top of that, what else could you use to in increase your your mental health? Well, like I said, you could try you know, personal development. You could try really something in personal development like Anthony Robbins or Jim Rohn or Richard Bandler or something like this. These are all great tools, great strategies. Stop me now and come up with one. Come up with two, come up with me and then somebody else. Excellent. So I hope you're starting to feel really good. You've got some you've got some things written down there that can really inspire you to take you to a better place. You've made an absolute commitment to making people in your life a more positive influence on you. What's really important is to know that you can change how you feel in a heartbeat. You can know how you can change in a second. So at any time, if you feel like you're a bit negative, then change your physiology. Get yourself a bit more you know, straight and pumped up. What else are we going to talk about now? Let's talk a little bit about exercise, okay? So let's say if you have, this applies to whether you work from home, whether you work for somebody else, or whether you have a stressful job. I think you really want to commit to working out seven hours a week. So three times a week, absolute minimum. But commit yourself in the next week to work out five times. What is the minimum? Well, I'll let you get away with something, okay? So I'll let you have one power walk for 15 minutes. That's walking as fast as you can. And then two exercises. If you include stretching, so 45-minute exercise with 
10 minutes stretching, okay? It's 15 minutes stretching before and after. Okay, so that's that's two hours and 15 minutes a week. But what I really want you to, to be is in a position where you're working out seven hours a week. If you try seven hours a week in the first week, you'll see a huge difference. And what's interesting is as the weeks go by, you realize, well, if I only worked out once this week, your, your mood is different than if you worked out seven hours in a week and you get them all done. the more you work out. It's absolutely true. And what's really important with bipolar people is that the more we exercise, the happier we get. Um, you know, if you're addicted to coffee, just have a coffee before you go to the gym. That's a good way of having a coffee and then getting it out of your system. So exercise early if you're going to do that because we're not having coffee after two o'clock, folks. That is just off the agenda. Okay. What else can you do to say goodbye bipolar disorder forever. I am a former bipolar sufferer. Oh, there's so many, there's so many things. You have to be really, really committed to, how can I say this? So we talked a little bit about stopping the self manifesting. So you've got to stop your negative mindset Forgive yourself. You have to stop beating yourself up for negative thoughts and you have to forgive yourself very often. Sometimes you might have to forgive yourself 100, 200 times a day for your negative thoughts. Once you can forgive yourself, it's a kind of acceptance and you can move on. And congratulate yourself as well. It's another kind of acceptance you can move on. So when you've done something well, just congratulate yourself and say thank you for things that happen in your life that you're happy about. One thing that I think is really important as well is if you can try this exercise for me. So I want you to, to write down, I am a former bipolar sufferer. Write it down. Okay, stop me now if you're doing something. Make sure we go back to it later, okay? So I am a former bipolar sufferer. Stop me now. Write that down. Then write thank you at the bottom. Just write thank you. And then put that note away so you're never going to see it again. So for years, I would say the best place to put it is in the loft, if you can get up in the loft, or just put it somewhere that you're never going to look at it. Uh, obviously not, you know, a fire hazard or anything like that. Don't put it near the heat or something. But that can just have a huge, huge impact. So that's another way we've got our goals, our incantations, and then you've got another way of just uh, writing something down and, and putting it away forever as a thank you. What that does is that that makes you accept the fact that you can be a former bipolar sufferer and it, it's, it's kind of works on another level. Also decide what are you going to do today to improve your mental health. Come up with one thing. Okay, what am I going to do to improve my mental health? So it might be, I'm going to exercise for an hour, non-stop, as, as fast as I can go. It could be, I'm going to eat healthier. This is something we haven't discussed yet. Okay, but just stop me there and just come up with one thing, one sentence, and how you're going to improve your mental health today. Excellent. I suggest that you do that every day on your phone as well. Just one sentence. And if you can write it in the present tense and in the I form, so in the first person, then that makes it more powerful as well. Okay. So let's talk about food and eating healthily. Well, we talked a little bit about fitness, haven't we? So obviously, if we're physically fit, then we're happier in some degree. And what we also want to do is to eat healthy. So how can we how can we do this? Well, stop eating so much sugary food and we feel better about ourselves when we're not overweight. That's an absolute fact, okay? And you know, we don't have to be super toned like Bruce Lee or whatever. We will have an image of how we want to look, how we're happy looking. So but let's get ourselves down to a, a, a decent weight so it's healthy. And how can we do that? Let's drink lots of water, okay? So at least 
three pints of water a day, you know, half a dozen glasses of water a day, have one as soon as you wake up, have a vitamin tablet when you wake up with it. They're like, you know, you know, like one dollar or uh, one pound for like 60. They're really, really cheap in the local supermarket, okay? And just have that viewable every day. So when you come down and you in the morning, you see it, so you have it. Or, you know, have it right next to before you wake, clean your teeth. Uh, but remember, you're gonna smile first for five minutes, though, so you can't have it straight away. Okay, so drink lots of water. Have fruit, have some fruit a day, an apple a day, ha you know, get your five fruit and veg a day. This is really, really important. Just don't overeat and don't eat as an emotional trauma. So if you're stressed out about something, don't eat. Just drink a glass of water or, you know, or do some smiling exercises or, you know, just run on the spot for 10 seconds or something. I know so many people will feel anxious and then they'll just start eating or, you know, just do something else. You know, have a, have a very diet. Um, I would say what we is we all know what a healthy food is. Uh, I don't follow a particular obsessive eating habit or diet or anything like that. But I do eat lots of fruit, fruit and veg. I do eat healthily, and you know I avoid overeating better than most people. You know, uh, I have been at a time I was a vegan for a year. That was really good. I had a lot of energy. But I'm not advocating a particular thing like that. I think you have to do what you're comfortable with. So some people are comfortable eating meat, some aren't. And But it's common sense. So but the main thing is not to overeat as a kind of emotional uh, you know, comfort. So find something else that, that you can do instead. Let me share with you um, one or two things that have helped me during my bipolar recovery. What else is there? Well, there definitely was the getting really heavily into the personal development. There was um, also changing my peer group, stopping the negative thinking, um, getting physically fit. I lost a lot of weight and got back to my normal um, healthy weight before, you know, before I'd, um, you know, put on quite a lot of weight over a few years, and I'd always been physically fit. Got into to sport again. What else is there that I can share with you that can really help? Well, one thing that helped me was stopping my stop blaming other people for things. This is a really hard one to 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 get right. Okay, this is a tough one. So taking responsibility for your life is just huge. It's so important. So the first thing it was like, oh, I didn't, you know, it's your fault that I didn't go to sleep last night. I was worrying about this or it's your fault that I haven't got enough money or it's someone else. It's always someone else's fault. Stop being one of these people that thinks like that. And even if you think like that, one time out of 10, that's not good enough. You've got to improve. So just whatever level you're at, you're at, you've got to improve. So force yourself to improve every day as a human being and to stop blaming people. Take full responsibility of your life and your actions. This is hugely important. Okay? And take care, everyone, and I'll catch up with you soon.